Hey everybody, welcome back to the Magic Channel Card Tricks and today we're going to teach you how to locate a card. You know, one of the most important things that you can do in Magic is control a card or locate a card, find a card in other words. Once the spectator has selected a card, returned it to you, you have a way of controlling it so that you know where it is. And today I'm going to talk to you about crimping a card. But before we get into that, I want you to think about something. And that is the idea of accomplishing magic by any means necessary. What does that mean? By any means necessary means that cards are tools. They are tools. And if they help you accomplish a trick and it's going to blow that spectator away, if it's going to entertain them and give them a sense of wonder or awe, we should do whatever it takes by any means necessary. And sometimes that means hurting your cards. Yep, I know. We love our cards, we buy them, we play with them, we shuffle them, and we think, I don't want anything bad to happen to this deck. I wanna keep it just like it is forever and ever. Well, <laughs> cards are just paper, they are. And if you're gonna do magic, it's probably best if you just pick up yourself uh, a deck of red bikes and, and just move on, right? Just spend $3 or so on a deck of cards and think to yourself, you know what? I'm going to let people write on these. I'm going to bend them. I'm going to tear them. I'm going to fold them. I'm going to do whatever it takes by any means necessary to entertain. And so today, crimping a card means bending a card. You are going to ruin... Hang on. This is why, this is why we're talking. You are going to ruin one of your cards. Okay? But... It is a great way to locate a card and we will also show you uh, a little trick that you can do afterwards all right so right at the beginning of this i would say this is where you just hand the deck to the spectator and they can shuffle and obviously we're doing this with our deck we're not going to do this with a spectator's deck because if we're going to bend a card it should be our deck right so the best tricks happen when the spectators can shuffle their own cards right so they shuffle the cards, and then you're going to offer a card up to be taken, right? Any card can be selected. Let's say they pick that one. That's a good one. Jack of clubs, right? So that's their card. While the deck is in your hands, you are going to bend the bottom card. And you're going to do that with a crimp, okay? So we're going to use this four of hearts card on the bottom. That's going to be the card that we bend. And really, you're going to have to play around with this. You're going to have to find the way that as you hold the cards in your hand works best for you to put a small bend, not a fold. Okay. We're not folding. Folding is way too obvious. You're going to put a slight bend right there on the corner and that's called a crimp. Now the way I was taught was that after you have the card selected and the deck goes back into this hand, you're going to hold it like this with the thumb on top, okay? And as the deck is straightened, you're going to use your pinky right here and you're going to pull down that bottommost card. You're going to pull down that bottommost card and just give it a bend, okay? And you want to make sure that you're just getting a single card and nothing else, okay? And you're going to give it like a nice, see that? You're going to give it a nice sharp bend. And what that does is it puts a permanent bend in that card and it does ruin it. I mean, it does. It's gonna, that, that fold is going to be there forever, but you've just made yourself a locator card. And if you can do that while you're just sitting here like this, waiting for the spectator to look at their card or show it around, you've prepared that card in advance. Okay? So now we're going to have the card put back. But usually what I like to do at this point is just to casually shuffle like this. Usually this is while I'm talking. Either I'm recapping what's happened so far or we're you know, continuing on with the pattern of the trick, I'm going to extend the bottom portion like this. Remember the top portion has our crimp card right there, that four of hearts. I'm going to extend this bottom part and say that they're going to put their card on top of the lower portion. It's hard to do with one hand. So they're going to have their jack of clubs. They're going to put it right here on top. And instead of shuffling more cards, I'm just going to drop the remaining cards on top. So now our crimp card is right on top. Okay, and at this point, you can just cut the cards to the table like this as a, as a fair cut and just say, we'll just cut the cards and lose your card. 
okay? And as I cut the cards, their card is now on top. How'd that happen? Easy. That four of hearts did all the work for us. There's your crimp card right there. You can see it, it's clear, right? When it's right like this, and you're kind of pushing down on the deck, that hides. But from your angle, you can see it really clearly. So I just say, let's cut the cards and lose your card. And as I cut like this, I can actually see that I'm grabbing the four of hearts, right? It's really easy. It's, you can practice it a couple times, you will just see how easy it is to grab. Look at that, I'm not controlling anything. The cards are loose. I can just reach down, pick it up. There's that four of hearts. And I just say, we'll just cut the cards one more time and lose your cards in the deck. And now I know their card is on top, okay? Now we can go into the second part. The first part of a trick is controlling the card knowing where it is. That was just them selecting a card, you control it to the top, you know its location, but the spectator doesn't. As far as the spectator is concerned, they think it's lost somewhere in the deck. And now you're gonna go into the second phase, which is the magic trick. And you're gonna say, you know what? Your card is somewhere in the deck, right? It's lost. Um, I don't know, wh where, do you th where do you think it is? Do you think it's in the top half, the middle, or the bottom? And they, they can give you whatever answer they want. And you say, you know what? Let's Let's see, if, let's see if you can find the card, all right? Um, give me a number between, oh, I don't know, 1 and 30. And they're going to say uh, 19. It's like, all right, 19. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you the deck like this, and I want you to count down just like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, 16, 17, 18, and I want you to place the 19th card off to the side, okay? That's, that's not it, is it? They'll say no. Say, good. That's what we're gonna do. You're gonna count down 19 cards, and you're gonna place that 19th card off to the side. They're gonna take the deck back, and what you've just done is reversed that top stack, and now their card really is at the 19th spot. So they'll count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's the 19th card, and there's their card. And you just did a card at any number, okay? You did a any card at any number. They selected any card at the beginning of this. There was no force, and you made it appear at any number. So that is a very simple any card at any number. Magicians, we call that ACAN. That's the acronym for any card at any number. So I hope you have a lot of fun with that. Practice your crimp. Get past the idea that you're bending a card, right, for all time. It's possible to let this bend start to wear back out again. You can bend it back the other way if you're really concerned about it. You could also leave it uh, in a book or leave it between two things that are super heavy. It's really not important. It's, it's really not important. You know, you should consider uh, cards like this tools of the trade, and when they get bent, this, that's just part of the, that's just part of it. You know, you're gonna have to get past having spectators sign cards too. You know, a lot of tricks they're gonna go so much better, and have such a stronger reaction if you allow your spectators to sign the card and then let them keep it as a souvenir. Uh, I know it ruins a whole deck, and I know decks cost money, but if you can get past that right? Mentally, in your head, if you can get past it, I guarantee you it's going to impact your magic and make you a stronger magician. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.